Hello and welcome to India's World. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj is heading to Islamabad to participate in a conference on Afghanistan. Her visit is highly symbolic at a time when India-Pakistan relations have hit another low. The visit will also take place after Prime Minister Narendra Modi's brief but very public meeting with his counterpart Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif on the sidelines of the Climate Summit in Paris. This has led to speculation that the visit of the Indian External Affairs Minister might be the first step towards breaking the deadlock in the relationship. We ask whether this is a calculated move by the Modi government or is it one more ad hoc step with no clarity about the kind of relationship India wants with Pakistan. To discuss the possibility of a thaw in India-Pakistan relations, we have with us a very distinguished panel of experts. We have with us Ambassador Satyabrat Pal, a distinguished diplomat. He's been India's High Commissioner to Pakistan and South Africa. He was also a member of the National Human Rights Commission. We have with us Ambassador T.C. Rangachari, another distinguished diplomat. He's been India's Ambassador to France and Germany. He earlier headed the Academy of International Studies at Jamia Milia Islamia and is now a distinguished fellow at the Vivekananda International Foundation, a think tank in New Delhi. And we are also lucky to have with us Nasheh Shazi Chari, a veteran journalist and commentator. He's a member of the National Executive of the BJP, head of the party's Foreign Affairs Department, and Executive Director of the Forum for Strategic and Security Studies, a think tank he runs. I welcome all of you to this discussion. Ambassador Paul, let me begin with you. Do you think that uh, External Affairs Minister Mrs. Sushma Suraj's visit to Pakistan can provide the much needed thaw in India-Pakistan relations, at least in terms of optics, if not in terms of the content of the relationship? Well, certainly. A visit by an external affairs minister to Islamabad uh, is always fraught with a fair amount of symbolic significance. And to that extent, it's a good thing that she's going. Whether it will lead to any uh, substantive discussions or not on the bilateral track, we don't know. But certainly the fact that she's going uh, is in itself a good thing. Okay. Uh, Master Rangachari, do you think something will come out of uh, this visit or do you think the Modi government will remain trapped in its view, which it propagated while the party was in opposition, that it's futile talking to Pakistan and therefore completely unnecessary? Well, first of all, uh, it's a bit of crystal gazing. Oh, absolutely. Actually, what is going to emerge as a result of the visit? So let's wait for and wait and see after a day or so as to what happens when she comes back. In any case, this visit is in the context of a, a multilateral conference uh, focused on Afghanistan. Uh, it's not a bilateral visit. Clearly, meetings will take place, so we will know uh, if 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 uh, anything substantive has emerged as a result of the talks. On the other question that you are asking, actually, this has been the pattern not today but for the last. Uh, seven decades or so between India and Pakistan, you've had moments when you've had dialogue, you've had moments when you've no, had no dialogue, and fairly long periods of time when you had no dialogue. There was a long period of more than five years when India and Pakistan did not even have diplomatic relations. And some things have happened, many things have not happened. So in that sense, talking, not talking has been a policy on this side, has been a policy on the other side. Go back uh, 20 years, you will find that when the composite dialogue was first announced, Pakistan refused to participate in it. It took nearly three years to get that composite dialogue going. So therefore, this is more, if I might say, quote-unquote, normal India-Pakistan relations than a period of talks, results, and getting on to some kind of a high thereafter. Mr. Chari, um, do you agree with him? that Mr. Modi was elected to continue relations with India's neighbours as was normal up to now, you know, the same ups and downs, no new thinking? Or do you think he began with the new thinking and then things started deteriorating? After all, if this, uh, you know, he invited everybody, the SARC leaders, for his swearing in. He talked about his focus on the uh, region and so on and so forth. Then UFA happened, the UFA statement came. Then this uh, handshake in uh, Kathmandu, and then you have uh, the sitting together in Paris. So what is going on? Is, is, the, is the attempt to sort of stay with the normal uh, or to change the normal? So smile from smile to uh, handshake to brief meeting, I think it's a gradual unfoldment of purpose. What is that purpose? So I think uh, Modi did begin very well. And uh, India's stand, irrespective of uh, who decides, India's stand has always been that we should have good uh, neighborhood relationships, number one. Number two, India-Pakistan relationship is not a normal relationship that you would otherwise have with any other country in the neighborhood. 
so pakistan has been on the map of uh, a lot of other factors all over the world it has been very difficult to deal with pakistan not just for india but even for china russia usa think of any country including afghanistan they have always found pakistan to be a very difficult country to deal with <coughs> one two between india and pakistan there has always been a constituency which says that we should talk and try and resolve all the issues all the problems it's so in islamabad it's so in delhi also but at the same time it's a unique kind of tug of war where very different factors pull the threads in different directions so sometimes those who pull it in opposite directions win sometimes those who pull in the same direction win so i think this time there is a feeling in islamabad and also in delhi that we should talk try to resolve and go forward whether the resolution is found or not i mean it's nobody's argument that <clears throat> this few minutes of handshake and a few seconds of meeting over a cup yeah. of tea yeah. has solved all the problems this will never happen okay it's a long standing issues so it has to go ahead but you're saying it's a positive but the development but beginning that we have both there is a realization on both sides that we have to sit and talk irrespective of what others do to derail the talks Okay. It's, it's okay, we'll we'll, we'll come to who's derailing the talks or not derailing the talks. But let me let me ask you, uh, you know, a question related to Mrs. Suraj's visit. Is the Prime Minister has accepted uh, uh, already accepted Pakistan's invitation for a SARC summit, which will take place in July next year? In what way, if not for a dialogue, in what way would uh, Sushma Suraj's visit set the uh, background or the, the lay the foundation for the Prime Minister's visit in July? Because things would need to happen before July. if he wants to have a successful sark visit i mean you just can't go and constantly be in a half uh, sitting like that in islamabad you, know, you need to talk to them so before that do you think sushma will set the uh, the ground for that visit no no firstly let's be clear uh, exactly as uh, mrs swaraj is going primarily for a multilateral conference so would the prime minister he would go there for a sark summit whether or not something else happens on the bilateral track uh, is 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 a different matter so the fact that he is committed to go for a sark summit in itself it doesn't need any particular preparation on the bilateral track except that between india and pakistan since nothing is normal it would be considered rather unusual that the prime minister of india makes his rare visit to islamabad and nothing at all happens on the bilateral front so clearly again it would be a bit difficult to try to expect things to happen cold that the prime minister goes there uh, and as it were reinvents the wheel so preparations have to be have to be made and they have to be started so if mrs swaraj's visit were to set the ball rolling uh, it would be very useful but the ball has to be then kept in motion it can't be that she sort of kicks it gently and then it comes to a halt again it it has to be a process that is started that leads on uh, through a series of constructive engagements at all levels and on all issues uh, so that uh, by the time the prime minister's visit comes around uh, you might have uh, something it might not be terribly terribly significant that will depend very much on the state of play yeah. bilaterally okay. but at least preparation right shankar do you remember any sark visit by indian prime minister which was purely multilateral and any any visit that took place in pakistan 2004 when uh, uh, atul bihari vajpayee went sark went into the background and it was all uh, the joint statement uh, uh, issued on how uh, pakistani territory would not be allowed to be used by uh, you know groups that uh, uh indulge in acts of terrorism against india so is there any visit by any indian prime minister a sark visit to pakistan where uh, bilateral things haven't happened well actually you might go back to 1989 rajiv gandhi's visit was even more dramatic because benazir had just come to power uh, sorry this is december 1988 uh, benazir had just come to power and uh, when rajiv gandhi went there there was a great deal no, of so expectation on both sides so it's not just the 2004 visit but to follow up a point that uh, ambassador pal was just mentioning uh this question of preparations etc 2004 visit might not have taken place at all but for that the commitment that you talked yeah. about yeah. you know pakistan soil not being used yeah 
And that phrase which covered POK in that formulation, that visit might not have taken place. Therefore, a visit at that high a level, even if it is in a multilateral context and a SARC context, it will certainly have some bilateral okay. implications. Okay. But I want to just add one thing. We have really run out of time on this segment. Okay. I'll come back to you. Okay. I'll come back to okay. you. Okay. We need to take a break at this point. We'll be back again with you in a bit. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're discussing the possibility of a thaw in India-Pakistan relations. Ranga, you wanted to say something before we went on the No, break. I just wanted to say that, you know, we are looking, if you are looking at July, it's seven months down the line, much can happen, <coughs> which can either work in favour or against yep. any so that's, that's, bilateral that's, that's fair enough. You know, no, on, on, on this uh, Sark issue, even you raised the issue of uh, the Prime Minister's meeting in uh, Kathmandu. Even there, you don't, we don't remember anything that transpired in that meeting except that the two Prime Ministers met. Mm -hmm. So, India-Pakistan relationship not, that's itself That's not strictly is true, but okay, I'll, I'll take the point. Now, uh, Sheshadi, just tell me, what do you think will, would need to happen for India and Pakistan to resume uh, a, a, a comprehensive dialogue which would include Kashmir? See, India has always said that we are prepared to talk on every issue including Kashmir. There have also been talks as far as India's water treaty uh, has been concerned. So, no, no issue has been no for us. It's first time that Pakistan also has said that we are prepared to talk to India without any precondition. Always Pakistan has been saying that the K word is the most important word and first you resolve Kashmir, then we will resolve other issues. I mean, I mean it was... Well, that's that, also that not a fair a statement of Pakistan's have. position, but... No, uh, but they had, they had taken this stand and then we had agreed that we will discuss Pakistan. Core issue also. doesn't mean the primary but issue. We but we have also been taking up this issue of uh, terrorism. So, we have been insisting that you first talk terrorism. So, these are all at what levels? Okay. Of course, the NSA is going to okay. talk the terrorism level, but right. the Prime Ministers are not going to stick themselves only to this. Yeah, so, yeah. this, I think, there needs to be more confidence building measures between the two countries and these meetings will improve that. Okay. Ambassador Paul, uh, well, Mr. Chari says that India has always agreed to discuss Kashmir. Then why is it that India did not want the Kashmir issue included in the <laughs> UFA statement? Uh, isn't that an outstanding issue between the two countries? And does India think that Pakistan will give up 68 years of strategic commitment to Kashmir and uh, you know agree to something where they look like the defeated party and the Kashmiris get nothing? You know, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Hmm. So for years, as Mr. Chari said, for Pakistan, it was a single issue. Then they abandoned the single issue and said, let's talk of everything else, including the single issue. Now, uh, when Pakistan's abandoned that, when uh, even China has abandoned the one-child theory yeah. uh, policy, we have abandoned, us, uh, we have uh, adopted a single issue policy. Yeah. So for us, terrorism is the only issue. First, sort out terrorism completely to our satisfaction. Then we talk of something else. Now, exactly as that sequencing didn't work, as far as we are concerned, vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan on Kashmir, it won't work on terrorism. Okay. We have to discuss everything together because everything's interlinked. Okay. Uh, Ranga, uh, what do you make of this uh, Paris Overture, you know, this 167 second meeting which everybody seems to have timed? Uh, was that encounter a uh, well thought out uh, 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 encounter with a specific objective or do you think this was just pure theatrics which you know uh, leaders in South Asia love you know they love to pose before television and we talked about and then say that we were dis actually discussing the weather. Earlier you were characterizing something about Pakistan's position as unfair let me now characterize your characterization of Indian position as unfair. <laughs> okay go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know it Maybe photo op is something which everybody likes. But I doubt very much that Indian leaders indulge in theatrics. There has to be something substantive for you to go up, talk to another leader yeah. about anything yeah. at all. What they have talked about, unfortunately, so far, we don't have any official confirmation. So we don't really know. Okay. But I want to get back to another point, which was in regard to a single issue. Actually, Pakistan has always argued that Kashmir... Terrorism is because of Kashmir. That is to say that because they can't get their way on Kashmir, therefore they must indulge in terrorism. It comes out in more or less so many words in a variety of statements that have been made. For India to accept that position when we have gone to the UN and elsewhere, and the UN says very clearly that no reason can justify terrorism. Yeah. For us to link and say that you must talk about both issues, 
I think is not right from our point of view. It's not in our interest. You talk about Kashmir, you talk about anything else at all, no problem. But to say that because of X, Y, Z reason, it is right for any country to indulge against terrorism against another country. And let me make another point. When Paris incident happened uh, last month, Kosovo Halan went to the nation and said, we are at war. So, you know, you have 129 people killed. Yep. Was that the figure? 129 Almost, people yeah. killed. You know, you go to war. You have a consistent pattern of behavior. And yep. you say, no, have a dialogue. Why aren't we saying to François Halan, please talk to the ISIS? Have a dialogue. Once you have resolved through dialogue, then after that we can talk about other issues. So, you know, let us, you should have some balance okay. between process of accepting terrorism. And internally, India should never ever accept terrorism because it is not in our interest to do so. Okay, so uh, he's, he's saying that the sequencing should be terrorism and then everything else. In which case, you know, you, probably the uh, prospects of a dialogue are limited. But do you still think that because the international uh, community has been counselling India and Pakistan to engage, Prime Minister Modi, after 18 months in power, has realised that it's probably worth engaging uh, with Pakistan rather than have a complete breakdown uh, of a relationship no, with a neighbouring country. I don't think I don't think the international community has been counselling us on these issues. Number one, and uh, I don't think we are in a position where we have to be counselled by the international community. Even even if you look at it uh, straight away uh, during the Rail Sharif visits to US. And also the US has very categorically told Pakistan that look, uh, all issues between India and Pakistan have to be resolved yeah. bilaterally. So don't bring in any other third party. And Pakistan may wish to have a third party agreement. Counselling doesn't mean uh, a third but party. But when we are concerned, mediation. we are not in we are not in a position to accept any third party intervention as far as these bilateral. Forget intervention. I'm saying advice. You can accept. But yeah, advice. It's uh, for it's for them to give advice whether to accept it in toto or not, or whether to implement it and to what extent to do all that, we know. Okay. And India and Pakistan have been dealing with one another for all these years okay. bilaterally, and we know where 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 the road, all these road leads okay, to. Okay, so all this wisdom so has think, left I to think, no I talking think, at all. No, but no, Ranga, you wanted to say something. It has not resulted in no talking. We have spoken, to... we have talked, we have had agreements, we have had progress, we have had confidence building Last measures. 18 months, please. So we have had, even in the it, last 18 months, we have tried many times. But we have put our own conditions okay. Quickly. on a number One of issues. Quickly, we are, we are running out of time. And as far as, as far as terrorism talks are concerned, even in UFA, we agreed it will be NSA level talks. Yeah. One very quick sentence, which is to say that it's not only India's priority. Even Pakistan says that terrorism is their priority. Also. Absolutely. It is. Yeah. Uh, which is precisely the point I wanted to make. That the difference between what the situation France is in and us is that you can only, uh, all that ISIS does is terrorism. Yeah. Pakistan, unfortunately, is a neighbor with whom you have several other issues. Absolutely. Okay, so we need to take a break again at this point. We'll be back again in a bit. Stay with us. Don't go away. Welcome back. We're discussing the possibility of a thaw in India-Pakistan relations. Sheshadi, let me come to you on this question of normalization of ties and terrorism. Now, do you think that this government, I'm not talking of India, says this government believes that the normalization of ties with Pakistan is not as critical as dealing with terrorism, which is what comes across from what you and Ranga are saying. Uh, and also that use this period to neutralize whatever uh, remnants of support Pakistan has in Kashmir. So finish their support in Kashmir and insist that they talk only on terrorism first. Yeah, I would agree to some extent with that because we have been thinking on these lines. In fact, even the earlier governments have also been thinking on these lines. Delinking terrorism and Pakistan as, uh, as Khan and Kashmir, as Ranga very rightly said it. I think that's where our interest also lies and that's where even Pakistan's okay. interest as far as resolving these issues also lies. Therefore, it will be, it's that is a move. In yeah. fact, that was one of the mo main reasons why we told Pakistan that if you want to talk Kashmir, talk to us directly. Don't bring in third party, not just third party from outside this area, but even within Kashmir, if you have any third party, they are not going to be part okay. of talks. Yeah, okay. Uh, Ranga, what really is the incentive for the Modi government to improve ties with Pakistan? Now, if you look at trade, for example, our trade with bilateral trade is 2.5 billion with Pakistan compared to 776 billion globally. Peanuts. So, you, you know, you don't suffer on trade. Regional linkages. Those regional linkages are useless till Afghanistan is stabilized or US-Iran uh, ties become, you know, 
uh, normal. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, the domestic constituency of the BJP, it's not for uh, you know uh, uh, hugging and kissing uh, Pakistanis. So what is the incentive for the Modi government to talk to Pakistan at all? No, the third if point you, I don't agree with you, of course. If you take that logic, in the last 70 years, we haven't really reached any substantive conclusions in our relationship with yeah. Pakistan. And, you know, yet India has progressed enormous, enormously. Pakistan has also progressed, perhaps not to the same extent, but it has also progressed. But I think, broadly, India's position has always been that you should have good neighborly relations and you should have good ties with all your neighbors. But, you know, this business of terrorism in Kashmir, we, it, this is wrong to say that there has been no dialogue. Going back to Panditji's time, you have had dialogue at the highest level. Prime Minister, President, subsequently... I am talking you know, of the last 18 so, months. Though. I don't really so, want to go into history no, no, because then saying, we have to discuss no, no, a lot no, no, of other no, no, things. I just want to make a very quick point. You didn't have terrorism there and yet you had dialogue. So to say that, you know, dialogue has not taken place or cannot take place... That doesn't... That I'm not saying that. That's a, don't create a false no. position and then demolish it. No, I'm, no, not, saying I'm that. not creating a false position. I'm simply telling you things as they are in the last okay. 70 All years right. because your question was, you know, is there any incentive? Have we had an incentive in the last 70 years? The same incentives operate today because you need to have good relations. Well, with Afghanistan was not destabilized so at that time. Iran, US relations are much better, but we'll leave it at that. Uh, uh, Ambassador Paul, why should... Pa what is Pakistan's compulsion of talking to India on uh, on uh, India's term, how does it help uh, the the ruling political parties in Pakistan to to be seen to be agreeing to everything that India wants? How does it help th the most important institution in Pakistan, the Pakistan Army, or Pakistan? How does it help Pakistani nationalism or even some powerful domestic constituencies to agree to everything that India says and not uh, and and be seen to be standing in front of India in sackcloth and ashes? No, it doesn't, and which is precisely whenever there is such an impression created that the Pakistani army reacts violently, uh, as it did in 2008. Yeah. Um, but, but clearly there, there are incentives on both sides. Uh, for Pakistan, the, the incentive would be to see if it can feed into the Indian growth story. There was, certainly when I served there, a huge interest in Pakistani industry to try to build on these peanuts of two billion is nothing, <clears throat> and to see if they could become, as it were, a feeder industry for the Indian IT industry and so forth. For India, particularly with this government, which is so built, or so, 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 so focused on trying to carry the India growth story forward, Pakistan in itself can contribute very little positively. But if things fall completely apart between Pakistan and India, as happened in 2002, then the impact on the Indian growth story will be inevitable. So <clears throat> Pakistan's ability to help us is limited, very, very limited. Its ability to harm us yeah. is, is quite substantial. And, okay. and, and to, don't yeah. forget, I just want to mention two things. One, Nawaz Sharif's campaign also included this issue of having good relations with India. And that was hyped up a lot. And uh, I mean, the people close to Nawaz Sharif really believe that that was one issue that gave him certain better points also. Two, when he was invited by Narendra Modi for his uh, um, swearing in, the army put its foot down. But in spite of that, Nawaz Sharif made that to visit. But that well-meaning so, politician so, so, so today think, is I being think, isolated by our policies. No, no, not our policies. Sorry, I don't agree with that at all. Yeah. And whatever Pakistan has been doing or whatever has gone wrong with Pakistan is because their own inter because of their okay. own internal okay, dynamics. Okay, we'll leave it that because we've really run out of time. Uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Sheshadi Chari, Ambassador uh, Ranga and Ambassador Satyabrat Pal for coming here and participating in this discussion. Uh, that's all we have for you today. We'll be back again as usual next week. Till then, goodbye and thanks for watching India's World.